Namaskaram, namaskaram to everyone. Well, hmm. if you were a virus, lot of good news, being human beings, lots of bad news. Hope they are not on the darshan. Well, particularly United States is looking great concern. Well, the declared number of fatalities has crossed thirty-seven thousand. Mm. And it's moving into more geographically a bigger spread. And unfortunately, a whole lot of people living alone in their homes are being found dead by themselves. Uh, I am unable to understand why they could not call somebody for emergency, whatever, but hundreds of bodies being found in homes alone. So probably these are people with other uh, medical conditions like cardiac condition and they don't go through the regular symptoms but due to cardiac failure or something else of that kind, they must be dying because of this. So, uh, concern about this is not over. I know a whole lot of people in India are raring to go on the streets on twentieth thinking it'll be relaxed. I don't think it'll be relaxed on twentieth except for a few services and uh, certain kind of economic activity like agriculture and a few other things. I don't think the nation can afford to do that. But even on third of May, when it is relaxed, we must understand, this is out of economic compulsions, not because we have conquered the virus. Economic compulsions are forcing us to do certain things, because uh, we don't want the solution to become more expensive than the problem. And slowly we are moving in that direction. Even the United States is talking about uh, opening up and going back to work and let's see what happens. Well, what happens is not going to be very pleasant. So, uh, I don't think from... I'm hearing things from various world leaders and everything. I don't think anybody has a a clue exactly how to handle this. We're only trying to slow it down with lockdowns. Nobody has a clue. <laughs> so, this is a war without shooting a bullet. A big lesson for the whole humanity. Because uh, in twentieth century, we've had many wars, two wars which could be called as world war, where the casualties were all in millions. When the World War I happened, in many ways, because it's in the same geographical space, Europe, that's where it started. And uh, people thought, never again we're going to do this mistake again, because 
it was such a disaster. In 2018, when the war ended, as if that was not enough, the Spanish flu happened. Over fifty million people died across the world, including probably three million in India. After that experience, in many ways, uh, people thought, this is it, we are not going to do this again. But within the same generation's life, not even the next generation, within the span of that generation's life, we went in for a second war, world war, which if you look back and see from World War I, what kind of weaponry they were using and World War II, what kind of upgrade happened. If you look at that, obviously after World War I, everybody was preparing for World War II because such a huge upgrade in the type of weaponry that was used. So uh, they spent those uh, <clears throat> like nearly thirty years mainly upgrading weaponry so that they could cause a bigger disaster, which they did. After World War II, well, the formation of uh, world bodies to see that wars don't happen, but some of the statistics say, this statistic is in 2000. It is still true, still true, I think, because since 2000 so many wars have happened. From 1944, <clears throat> when the world war ended in a two big blots on humanity, the two nuclear bombs dropped on people who did not know what the hell it is. From there till 2000, statistics say not a single day not a single day plas uh, passed on this planet without some kind of war or battle happening. That entire sixty-six years, I'm sorry, fifty-six years, it's been happening. Well, from two thousand onwards, all of you have witnessed how many nations have been ravaged. So, now we are at war because uh, what is happening now definitely has, has to be handled and in war footing. But a gentler army of people, doctors and nurses and fighting, but a whole lot of people are determined to see the war takes maximum toll. And fortunately, People are taking out protests about the lockdown in United States. In other countries also small protests have happened. In India, certain people wanting to consciously spread it, they're spitting on the vegetables and selling it, infected people. It's really unfortunate that this has been the mindset of humanity for some reason or the other that well, somewhere we have a fatal attraction towards havoc, we want havoc. We think it'll only happen to others, but that's not how it happens. When it happens to others, it will happen to us also. But the level of prejudice, the level of hatred, the level of resentment, that you want to cause damage to somebody else's life has unfortunately sank so deep into human heart. Based on race, religion, nationality, ideologies, these damn things have taken such a big toll in the last few hundred years, unbelievable. The amount of suffering that we have heaped upon each other in the name of race, religion, national borders and national interests. 
and of course for ideological stuff is... Uh, is truly... Uh, it's very clear, the moment you get identified with any one of these things strongly, whether it's your race or particularly your religion because here you have divine sanction to do horrible things, nationality also, it's all right, we belong to a nation because that's a way to manage the world because we have no mechanism to manage the whole globe, we have to manage nations, that's the only way we can manage people. And stupid ideologies that you make up in your head become more sacred than life itself. Well, if humanity has to become in some way not fully liberated, at least reasonably free from this damn things. Turning inward, an experience beyond physical boundaries, which is uh, being described as spiritual process, essentially it's this, that your identity is not limited to physical boundaries, either of body or of community or of race or religion or nationality or ideology. This is all spiritual process means that your boundary is not limited by any physical entity. If this doesn't happen large scale, as we become more and more competent, as our science makes progress, our disasters will get more dastardly, more complicated and more sinister. So human competence has become a massive problem right now, simply because people are identified with little things. As a generation of people, if we do not strive to get people beyond their limited identity, identities of these four or five things, I... these four or five things, if you ask me, I know people are going to attack me for this. These four or five things which I mentioned, race, religion, ideology, these must be put in the category of filthy words in our languages. Because this is the worst kind of filth that's happened to humanity. The color of my skin, the nonsense that I believe in and something that I make up in my head and make it sacred, these things have made human beings do things that no human being can be proud of, but they are proud of it because uh, <sighs> something more than their intelligence tells them. And they are hearing voices from elsewhere. So, at a time like this, every sensible human being on this planet, if we don't stand up and act now, well, it clearly shows we are not interested in the future well-being of human race, that's what it means. This question is from Gayatri. Namaskaram Sadhguru. In my understanding, God is the creator of whole existence and he is referred to as Swayambhu. When you speak about science of God making, I get confused. How can a piece of creation create the creator? <laughs> what do I do? <laughs> In your understanding, God is the source of creation, is it? What is that? Is a, he's a creator, mm. so how can a piece of creation create the creator? Oh, we'll come to the second part. First, your understanding. That he's a creator of whole existence. Okay. First thing is you do not know what is whole existence, nobody knows. 
when you do not even know the whole existence, how come you know the creator? I'm saying, if you can't see the product, you have no ability even to see the product in its fullness, you just seeing a minute part of it. But now you know who made it and what's his quality, how he does it, everything you know. So there is a serious problem in your understanding. You cannot call this understanding. This is simply a certain arrogance in a human being that you don't have the humility to say, I do not know. So you understand every damn thing in a damn stupid way. And uh, if you gather a thousand people around you with the same stupid belief, you become a powerful force and you have connection with the creator. Because when all the idiots say the same thing, among the idiots it becomes the truth. Well, you don't know where this creation begins, where it ends. But you know who created it and how. And you also know he created himself and his gender is masculine. All this you know. But you don't know a damn thing about yourself. So this is exactly what I was saying two minutes ago. You are a serious problem. You may think you are a pious religious being, but you are a serious problem to humanity. You are a serious problem to every life on this planet. You need to understand this. Because you make up things and because even your own mind cannot accept it, you stamp it with the authority because you hear it from above. If you heard the birds, I can understand. Hmm? If you don't hear them, they will drop something on your face. Then at least you will understand there's a bird up there. But you're making up all this nonsense because you just don't have fundamental sense of humility or honesty in your life. So you're making up all this nonsense. The fact of the matter is, you do not know the shape, form, size, whatever of this creation. That is the nature of your existence. Well, so your understanding, once it goes away, because it's not understanding, if you had clearly perceived this is it, you wouldn't be asking me a question. Either you must be realized or you must be a fanatic. Both these people don't ask questions because they know. One knows, another has gathered people. So fanatics absolutely believe this is it because they've gathered people and only they live among themselves. If you ask three questions, your heavens will collapse, your scriptures will collapse, everything that you believe will collapse. That is why we've always been killing the people who ask questions. Because this is another way of handling the question. Yes, <laughs> very effective. <laughs> when you do not know the answer for the question, kill the questioner, question is gone. So this has been the way of handling questions. Now this is a question. I will not make the questioner gone. I want to make the question gone because you don't even understand. You don't have a perspective. What is creation? What could be its source? You have absolutely no perspective anywhere. All this is coming from the fundamental arrogance that human being is the center of creation. No, you are a worm, you are an insect, you are not even an ant. Mother Earth looks at you like you are coronavirus. Because your impact on her is just the same as the impact of virus on us. It's the same thing. 
So do not assume so many things. If you remove these assumptions, then you become a continuous state of wonder. Everything that you see, too fantastic? You can't figure out a damn leaf in your entire life, I'm telling you. If you live for hundred years, if you look at an ant for one hundred years, you will still not figure out how he is made. But now you know how the creator is made, you're saying he's Swayambhu. Well, Swayambhu meant something else, not the way you're thinking, he made himself up. You have also made yourself up, huh? You were born like this, now you became like this, did you make yourself up or no? And all these stupid things that you're thinking and believing, also you made it up. Ah, maybe you have a community that supports you, and you… maybe you have a book that supports your community, but you believe things which you do not know. Why don't you be human enough to say, I do not know? Then there is a possibility of enhancing your perception. From where you are, at least you may move to the next step. Sadhguru, we all came here, we're sitting in this darshan <laughs> because we thought you will make us understand everything. No, I'm just trying to make you understand, you will never goddamn understand a damn thing in this universe. That's all I'm trying to make you understand. You will not. You can experience. This is a privilege. That also we don't know why this privilege is given that we can experience things. Understand? What have you understood? One… one single thing, have you understood something? One atom, have you understood? Over ninety-nine percent of the atom is empty. Have you understood that ninety-nine percent? That point zero 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 one percent something you have understood out of that? Well, the first thing you made is a bomb. Yes? <laughs> that is the first thing you made, that is your understanding. You took a building block of physical nature and made it into a terrible destructive force. This is your understanding. So, uh, what's the last part of the question? How can a piece of creation create the creator? Oh. So this happened. Her son was in the American university. American university means any… anybody's children go to American university, the parents will be crossing their fingers and hoping they will come out of this four years without becoming addicts, without getting lost, without getting killed, something. I'm not trying to paint a very bad picture of a nation, but unfortunately, this has become the way of youth. If you spend four years there and come out without drugs or smoking or alcohol, you are like, you must have been a freak in your university. You are the… probably the only freak. So you know, your child is not a freak. So mother is worried, what is he doing? So she decided for his birthday, she will send him a very ornamentally uh, wrapped kind of, you know, bound Bible to him. Hoping that he will open this book. Most probably he's not opened any book since he went there, you don't know. But at least she is hoping he may open this book and something will stick to him. So she packed it and took it to the post office. The postmaster asked the lady, is there anything breakable in this package? She said, uh, only the Ten Commandments <laughs> So she's worried the son may break all of them. If he breaks fifty percent, five of them, six of them and comes back with at least four intact, uh, she's thinking it's success. <laughs> 
but worried that he may break all the ten and come, and may not come. All parents are going through this in the world today, not only in America, everywhere. More so there because most trends start there and slowly it is becoming part of the world everywhere, including Indian urban areas, it's very much becoming like that. So, <coughs> will I... will I know the nature of the existence and the nature of the creator? You will never understand, but you can experience the nature because the nature of creation is such that as I was saying even with regard to virus, the nature of creation or the nature of life on this planet is such, it's all life is all enmeshed. There is no such thing as you as a separate life. There are millions of bacteria living here within this, so many viruses living in this. This one thing is little more troublesome than the other, so we manage it. We kind of made deals with that. When you eat, something goes into you, when you walk, it, something goes into you, if you open your mouth, it goes into you, if you don't open your mouth, it will go through the nostrils. That is why everybody's wrapped up right now. So this is the nature of life, it's all intermingling. This is the nature of creation also. What is creation and what is the source of creation are all enmeshed. Otherwise, you wouldn't grow up like this. You didn't take brick and mortar and plaster yourself into this size and form. It happened from within. Obviously, what creates this is functioning from within you. Because it's within you, you must understand this very clearly, only because it's within you, you have the ability to experience. Because all human experience happens only within you. You think you are able to see this tree, you are seeing this tree, it's not true. Light is falling on this, reflecting, coming, going into your... through your lenses, inverted image in the retina, you know that whole story of how ophthalmology works, at least on the basic level. So you're only seeing it the way it's projected in your mind. How the parrot is seeing the tree, you don't know. How an ant is seeing the tree, you do not know. How an elephant see the, sees the tree, you do not know. We have some vague idea. But you know how you're seeing it, that is the way you're seeing it. So, you're only experiencing everything. Light and darkness happens only within you. Pain and pleasure happens only within you. Joy and misery happens only within you. Agony and ecstasy happens only within you. Everything that you think you know is only happening within you. Or in other words, you know, you know or you are capable of knowing only what happens within you. You are not capable of knowing anything else. You are relying on the fundamental instru instrument of perception which is human mechanism and you are assuming what you perceive is everything. Completely wrong way of looking at life. Complete misunderstanding, it's a keyhole vision of life. It is like you are looking out of a keyhole, Let's say a cow passed, slowly the cow walked. You saw the nose, these days you're afraid of the nose, I know. So you covered yours, then you saw its snout, then you saw its eyes, then you saw its horns, then you saw its neck, then you saw the body, like a wall it passed, then you saw the tail, whatever, piece by piece. Now at every point you go keep on making conclusions. The conclusion that you made when you saw the snout obviously changed when you saw the horns. It obviously changed with every part. Isn't this the way we are exploring what we consider as science? Every day our opinion about the creation is changing. And uh, well, opinions about creator is endless. So, when we said God-making, we are not talking about God as the God. We are talking about creating a yantra, a tool. 
with which if you can walk better with something than just your legs, it's good for you. If you can, instead of running, go on a bicycle, it's really wonderful. You do one thing. Now you have to go to the dining. We will do this from tomorrow for you, today we are not organized. Only if you arrive there, we will uh, break the darshan just two minutes before seven o'clock. Seven o'clock if you are there only you will get food, otherwise you will not get. You will all start running, just uh, maybe seventy, eighty yards from here, may no, maybe, no, maybe about three hundred yards from here. But you will see, most people will go without food. What they will do, by day after tomorrow they'll all get a bicycle. Because we don't allow other vehicles, they'll get a bicycle. Then the next day you will see only people with bicycle will get the food. So because we realized this, we came up with all kinds of machines. Those who have instruments to perform better, will perform better. Today you say, some countries are technologically advanced, what does it mean? They got better machines, so they're doing well. So here in this culture, we looked at deities as machines or yantras. Out of that, did we succeed? Of course, in a phenomenal way, ahead of the rest of the world, when people were still hunting and gathering in most of the world, most parts of the world, here we were in highest level of mathematics, music, various sciences, and lived very, very, uh, you know, affluent for those days. And even just two hundred and fifty years ago, it was the most affluent culture. Over thirty-three percent of the world's produce came from India. You think all this happened without some kind of technology? Technology in a different way. Because we did not think of building machines, we thought of technologies which will enhance this machine. As this machine got more and more enhanced, the level of performance, intelligence, the intricacies of culture, this evolved like no other place. I'm not speaking this out of my nationalistic pride. I'm not made like that. But as people, as culture, nobody explored the inner mechanics of a human being as this culture did. Nobody invested that much time and energy for those dimensions of life. Everybody always thought our external con conquest is the only success. So it produced great conquerors, Alexanders, Genghis Khans. We never produced anybody like that. Here, we produce sages and seers. This is the only culture. I want you to just look back and see. This is the only culture. Even today, our history is marked by our sages and seers and yogis of the time not by the kings most of the time. Only in the last three hundred, four hundred years we are talking about kings, otherwise largely we say this is the time of this sage and that is the time of that yogi, simply because we gave this significance to develop this machine into a high-performance machine. So that this machine functions in a way where it looks super... superhuman, not physical performance, in terms of perception, because we saw that only by enhancing perception, life can be enhanced, simply there is no other way. If you want to enhance yourself, you must be able to see something, you must be able to hear something, you must be able to know something that normally people are not able to know. In this context, we created deities. Well, the word God is an English word, they started using God's word, they call everybody, every yogi, every sage and seer in this country, these idiots who have been educated in English education in India, including myself. They call all of us God-men. Did anybody ever claim we are God-men? But they are using that word, I have been protesting in many places. I said, there are no God-men anywhere, nobody has claimed it's you, goddamn men who are creating these God-men. Nobody ever claimed he's a God-man, because this is all imported ideas you picked up and trying to mess up everything here. You need to understand in this culture, 
anybody who has enhanced his perception is valued immensely because we thought this is the only machine which is of highest significance because this is the most significant machine on the planet, most sophisticated machine on the planet. Fine-tuning it is more important than simply creating other machines. You went on creating other machines, you can... Uh, you are always talking about moving the mountains. What kind of an idiot will move mountains? I'm saying, hello, you want the mountain to be moved here? It once happened. Shankar and Pillai came to Isha Yoga Center. Checked in at the welcome point and said, I want a room with the best view. So because if you don't know this, don't rush into this, now start fighting for this room. The Chitra block, first floor has the best view. Now of course, now Shiva Padam has come, it's different. But otherwise, Chitra block, first floor, always had the best view in this part of the ashram. So they put him on the first floor Chitra block. Next day he came to the welcome point and freaked. He said, I asked for a room with a view. There is no damn view in my room. They said, sir, we've given you Chitra block, first floor, isn't it? That has the best view. Where is the view? The damn mountain is in the way. Right now, you are deceiving yourself because you do not... you have not made any efforts to handle your intelligence properly. Your intelligence is the only problem right now, it's turned against you. You're deceiving yourself. Now what's deceiving? It happens in so many ways, in ways that you cannot imagine. It so happened, a pretty young woman, got embroiled in a courtroom drama about husband and wife filing for divorce, she got embroiled. So in that the... the... the other counsel who was representing the opposite side, the wife's side, he questioned this girl, is it true you held this man's hand and walked into this hotel? and only next day morning you came out. Is it true? She said, but I was deceived. So the lawyer asked, how were you deceived? Well, when we checked in, he told the clerk that I'm his wife. I was deceived. You're not getting it. It's okay. So you, you don't get, get such things, that means you're free of deception, very good. <laughs>